Yes, I'm a Star Trek nerd. <laughs> yeah, I like all sorts of sci-fi, but it's Star Trek that really has inspired me uh, in my life. Uh, when I was a kid in the 80s, you know, growing up, it was the space travel that really sort of uh, captivated me in the original series, the reruns of the original series, even that's that old. When I was in my 20s, it was the, the technology that really opened my eyes up to the, the possible future that's ahead of us. You know, they, they used technology um, in really interesting ways. That, uh, they, they had things like replicators, which turned molecules into uh, food, clothing, tools. They had medical tricorders and hypersprays that you know, diagnosed illnesses and delivered medicine painlessly. They had universal translators so they could understand people without having to have a, trans a human translator. Um, so that really enabled good communication. They had holodecks for education and entertainment. And they were starting to see virtual reality come real. We even had artificial, we even, you know, they had artificial intelligence and natural language processing that allowed us to communicate and work with computers and androids. But it wasn't the technology so much that really inspired me. It was the world that they lived in, the state of the world that they lived in. It was because of these technologies that humankind doesn't need to work to survive. They have the computers creating the food and the shelter and their, and their clothing. Uh, and therefore, they, you know, therefore there was no need for money. Uh, and therefore, uh, no uh, inequality or pain or suffering. And this is what drove me to want to get into tech and make a difference and do my part to make a difference and bring the world to this place. So when I was 28, I went back to university to do an IT degree after working in hospitality. And it was great to you know, play with these gadgets and these, this hardware, but you soon realize that it's the software that makes these things useful. And learning programming was definitely a roller coaster ride on emotions. It's not something that uh, you tread into lightly. I remember the first project, that you know, homework project that the tutor gave me, um, and it took me days to try to figure out how to make this program work. We had to you know, take in some input, do some processing of that, in, of that data, and output the correct result in the right format. And it was, um, you know, I wanted to pull my hair out, I was swearing, I had a big chunky PC, I wanted to throw that up out the window. But I just kept trying, persevering, keep trying some different code, and eventually, it worked. And that was sort of the, the moment for me because I was just dancing around the house with joy, uh, loving it that, you know, finally, after all that time and effort, I actually got it to work. And that's sort of what got me hooked on, on coding. And I didn't, I didn't even know I wanted to get, sort of get into a computer science research degree. I ended up working at IBM and a uh, <coughs> software consultant mostly uh, talking about software, installing software, uh, teaching people about software rather than actually coding. Uh, and it was a great experience, you know, working for a big multinational technology company. But uh, it wasn't, so, you know, I was thinking back to my uni days, you know, I really enjoyed that coding. So I started teaching myself some of the new languages that were around and rediscovered that love and uh, just wanted to do more of it. So I jumped ship and started uh, as a freelancer, software coder, and then I got the opportunity to teach. And that was sort of the best thing I uh, ever did. I jumped at that opportunity, and it, uh, it allowed me to really share my love of coding with other people, and also you know, inspire others to take up the challenge. So now I've been uh, running my own coding school for a few years. Uh, it's great to be able to you know, teach kids and adults of all ages and of all backgrounds how to code. You know, we have adults coming in from you know, accountants and doctors and lawyers and 
retail workers and hospitality workers, you know, all seeing that you know the world is changing and they don't want to be left out or left behind. So why not come in and, and see what this is all about? But it's also um, you know, pick kids from you know six right through to you know sixty plus year olds as well coming in to you know uh, create something that helps other people. So these are a couple that came in and did a part time course last year, Sam and Sam, uh, and. It's a new thing, this, doing learning coding as a couple. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Sam, Sam is uh, the, the guy. He, a uh, recent graduate, was working at, as a, in finance admin. Uh, the girl, Sam, was working at, as program manager at change.org. Anyway, Sam, the guy, he, um, you know, was the, well, they were both inspired by, you know, tech startups and, and wanting to sort of get into that world and, and seeing that, you know, knowing coding is going to help them whatever they decide to do. But uh, Sam uh, was getting great ideas and applied for a tech startup incubator, a place where you know, people help you get started. And because uh, he saw that the, one of the issues that he wanted to solve was that he saw his friends sharing you know, news stories on, on, on Facebook and uh, Twitter you know, about the injustices they saw in the world and you know, damage to the environment. He saw that that was quite, not really making a big difference. You know, he's called that selectivism. So he saw a solution to that that, you know, try to help, what about if we make it easy for people to um, donate a couple of dollars when they share this, uh, this information and uh, these news articles and then will hopefully encourage their friends to also donate. So he got into the incubator and uh, he worked on it himself and it's now launched, he's got, uh, you know, charities such as Oxfam and Greenpeace, you know, on board. So uh, yeah, he's really just thrown himself into it, working full time, left his left his admin job, and loving it. Now another student of mine from last year, Anna. She uh, she was a sports coach. She was driving for Uber. She worked in a startup and uh, wanted to come and learn how to code. She halfway through the course, she had the, the confidence then to to go along to a hackathon. Now, a hackathon is like a two to three day event where people come together and hack uh, a solution to a, a particular problem area. And the one she went to was Tech Refugees, which was about improving the lives of refugees. And the, the problem that they saw was that uh, the, a lot of these refugees had, were really highly skilled, had a lot of talent in you know, a lot of professions, but were you know, ending up in menial jobs. So, you know, they've put together a platform that allows companies who are looking to do good, but also, you know, refugees that have skills and helping them, you know, do internships and, and, and come together like that. So, yeah, she's done really well and now she's doing that full time and throwing herself into it. And, um, and so you can see why I love what I do. It's not just um, myself feeling like I am doing that bit to bring the world to that place that I want it to be, but you know, helping other people do their bit as well. So, I'm not saying that everyone needs to learn to code to make a difference in the world, but if you do want to make a change, and you're not sure how, give coding a go. You don't need to be a rocket scientist or a maths whiz. Uh, anyone can do it. Uh, Yes, it's not easy, but it's, it's like learning a language that you speak, like French or Chinese. In the beginning, you feel like you're never going to understand it, you're never going to you know, be able to uh, speak it or write it. But with practice, with support, you can get there. And it's a really empowering skill to have. And you know, I, the best moment I have is when I see my eyes, the eyes of my students, and they light up. Uh, you know, only, only like six, seven, eight weeks into a course, and they all of a sudden realize they can now code and they can build anything they want to build. You know, they, they know that they don't know everything yet. You, know, you never know everything as a coder. You're always learning and finding out new things. But you know enough now that you can figure the rest out. And that's a really powerful thing. And I think that you know, there's, there's so many tools and resources and online discussion boards 
and lots of friendly programmers from around the world to help. So you know that you can build anything that you want to build and that Google will help you find everything else out that you need. So it's Um, yeah, so it's, I want to uh, encourage you to, to have a look if it's something that you have thought about doing. Uh, it is something that's really empowering and uh, once you, know, you have a new idea when you get up every day and it's better than the idea you had yesterday, you start a list of all the apps that you're going to get around to building one day and uh, you really feel like you can make a, a difference in the world. So I suppose my final message is that, you know, Anyone can do it, you can do it, and it's fun. Thank you.